Hello, and welcome to our webinar, The Role of Employee Engagement and Company Culture in Driving Success. This is Janet Eden-Harris, the Chief Marketing Officer here at Four Winds Interactive. And as I mentioned a few weeks ago in our first webinar, I've been struck by how much expertise there is here in the business, from finance and HR to operations and sales management. And I thought that many of you might just be interested in learning from some of that hard-won knowledge that you can apply in your own organizations. So I'm excited to present our second webinar in this new series with our VP of Talent Development, Elizabeth Mays. As you'll hear, Elizabeth has been really leveraging our internal digital signage network since she joined us a year ago. And what's striking is the impact that it's had on our culture and employee engagement, and ultimately our employee turn turnover in the past year. These aren't just nice to have changes, it's actually had a big benefit to our bottom line. Wait till you're here. But before we get started, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. First, to limit background noise, we've placed all participants on mute. But that doesn't mean we don't want your questions. We will have a Q&A session at the end. So go ahead and send us any questions or comments prior to the Q&A session to, the, to webinar at fourwindsinteractive.com. We'll be monitoring these live, and we'll get to as many of them as we can in the 45 minutes we've set aside for this webinar. If we don't get to your question, though, we'll be sure to follow up with you directly. We'll also be recording the session, and if you'd like a copy, use that same email to let us know and we'll get the materials to you. Again, that's webinar at fourwindsinteractive.com. And now to kick things off, we'd like to open with a quick intro video from our CEO, David Levin, talking about what it means to operate in this new digital workplace. Welcome to our new office under construction. After 10 years, we finally have the opportunity to build out our own office completely from scratch. And we're building it out to be the prototype of the digital workplace. We're building out state-of-the-art offices here in Denver because we wanted to envision what the workplace is like over the next 10 years and then build visual communications into that environment. In a few short months, this space will become the model for the workplace of the future. I'm David Levin. I'm the CEO of Four Winds Interactive. And we like to think of ourselves as the visual layer in the digital business enabling organizations to engage their customers and their workforce by putting the right information on the right screen at the right time in a visually engaging way, all from a single software platform. This webinar series is designed to bring answers to the questions that most organizations are facing when they think about how to communicate effectively in today's digital world. To your customers, to your workforce, to your students and fans, to anyone who you interact with in a meaningful way. Today's webinar is hosted by our VP of Talent Development, Elizabeth Mays. Elizabeth joined us about a year ago, and from the first time I met her, I knew she was the right person to lead the people part of our organization. Over the past year, one area I'm particularly impressed with is how Elizabeth has used our software to drive collaboration and engagement within our organization. We're excited to bring you this information as part of our ongoing executive webinar series. So much for that uh, kind introduction and welcome to those of you who are joining us today on the webinar i'm thrilled to have you here you're going to find out very shortly that i'm extremely enthusiastic about this topic and i'm also a scottish descent and we have perfected the art of making the short story long but i'm going to work really hard to keep us in on our 35 minutes that we promised you today and i'm very confident that in that 35 minutes you're going to learn something new and we're going to share some concepts that maybe uh, the average HR practitioner is not talking about. So with that, let's get started. Let me quickly cover sort of what our agenda is going to be for today. First, we're going to start with engagement and, and does it really drive measurable benefits? And then we're going to move on to the critical role of culture and how it supports and drives engagement in the workplace. Then we're going to move into another topic that's near and dear to our hearts, the digital workplace and how we embrace that to drive change. Then finally, guess what? ROI is not just for our friends in finance, and we're going to share some real-life examples of exactly how these phenomena in our workplace drive real numbers. All right, well, before we get started with that, I do want to set a little bit of context around what employee engagement really means, at least from my perspective. Certainly, this term has become very well used and understood in what I would call the people leader landscape, whether they're an HR practitioner or an internal communications person, um, I sometimes get the sense that it's becoming defined as the end 
and I see it more as the means to the end uh, rather, rather than the end itself. Engagement's really a metric that we measure that is sort of like a vital statistic. It reflects the health of an organization. And what we as people leaders really want is what engagement brings. So I like to think of it more like electricity. It's the energy source that fuels certain outcomes. And those outcomes have been proven statistically through a variety of studies, but I'm gonna touch on four highlights of those outcomes, and, and that's what we really want. So the first is productivity and performance. There's a direct correlation between highly engaged employees, high productivity, high performance. We also see when we have a highly engaged workplace, you know, that we get innovation and ideas that come forward. So the employees start to really co-create with us and bring forward ideas that can be to either improve our products or enhance something, do something more efficiently, or in some cases just create entirely new products altogether. So highly engaged employees, they've got their head in the game, and so they're definitely coming forward with those innovative ideas. Another thing that we see that engagement fuels are one that I, I just love to see happening are employee evangelists. You know, when our employees go out and evangelize for us, both internally and externally, that's incredibly powerful, right? Don't take my word for it, I'm the talent lady, but if you take my employees' word for it, they'll tell you that something's real. Uh, and so that's really, really important. And then finally, last but not least, we also see that highly engaged employees are committed and dedicated to the organization. And so we, as people leaders, these are the things that we wanna see that come out of engagement, and that's why it's so important. But let's not just take my word for it, right? I'm just one person. Our friends over at Harvard Business School conducted a study in 2013 that really measured what I would call key success indicators. And what they came back with won't surprise any of you, but you'll see here uh, the results of their study that high level of employee engagement was the third most important indicator of success in an organization. Right before it comes that high level of customer service at 80%, followed uh, shortly thereafter by effective communications at 73%. So I want you to remember that 73% number because we're gonna get back to that in a little while, but let's for now just focus on that 71%. So we know from this study that employee engagement's really, really important. Um, another study that was done by the Corporate Leadership Council indicates that a direct correlation between that engagement and uh, profitability, right? So engaged companies with highly engaged employees are gonna grow profits three times faster than their competitors. So that's really compelling value proposition. And also that highly engaged employees are 87% less likely to leave the organization, and that has a direct impact on that very costly turnover that we all live with uh, in, in uh, our day-to-day -day experience. So there are real numbers that back up these, that 71%. That said, unfortunately, sadly, we all know that there's a big gap. So while 71% of the respondents said that employee engagement's really an important indicator of success, only 24% of those respondents in that Harvard Business School study said that their organizations are actually highly engaged. So we know there's a big gap between what's truly important to success and what's actually happening. Why? Why is it so hard? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why, because employee engagement's not a one-time event. If it were, we would all do it. It's not like we can just do one thing and poof, we have 95% engagement. That's just not how it works. So engagement, an environment that's highly engaged, has to be consciously created. It's, it requires a kind of constancy, if you will. And so that brings us to our next topic that we wanted to touch on, which is culture, which is really key. It's a foundation to engagement, because culture is what's going to encourage an engagement-rich environment. Well, we're very fond of Peter Drucker around here, so we're going to quote him again. We quoted him last time. Nigel quoted him. So this time, you can see... Uh, very, very famous quotation, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And it couldn't be more true. In fact, anyone who's been through a painful merger or acquisitions knows that this is very much true. Uh, culture is, you know, I describe it in a lot of different ways. It's like that iceberg. You see 95% of it is underneath the waterline and the 5% of it that's above that waterline. And yet that 95% is so powerful and has such huge weight in an organization is often overlooked. So the reason I bring that up is because if we really want to encourage an environment of engagement, we need to cultivate our culture. And so the analogy I use here to describe it is that cultivating culture is really like gardening. 
It requires that constancy that I talked about before. The culture of a company is really its personality and brand, and we create that through hundreds and thousands of small little things that we do all the time. Some are large, but most of them are really small. Yes, they're events and activities, but they're also day-to-day -day programs. There are choices, there are messages, there are acts that we do every single day, how we communicate things, how we frame things. All of that leads to cultivating our culture. And so what it adds up to from a culture perspective is, in my experience, it's either the magic elixir that propels a company forward to be successful, or conversely, it can wind up being the kiss of death to a company that otherwise had a very promising product and really talented people running it. So super important. So now that we've tied kind of engagement and culture together, let's talk about how we leverage the power of visual communications to drive those things, and how we do that in particular here at Four Winds. So first, I want to draw your attention back to remembering that 73% effective communication score we saw in the HBS study. Right, so we know effective communications are incredibly important to a high-performing organization. We also know that they're incredibly important to driving engagement, so the two marry nicely. So what have we done traditionally? You know, as, as people leaders, as HR practitioners, what have we done? Well, what we've traditionally done is send out memos, send out emails, print up posters and tack them on the wall. Uh, we like to do PowerPoints and give them to our leaders and say, hey, go talk to people. <laughs> go get in front of them in an all-hands meeting. And I even worked at one company that was very famous for what I call the desk drop. So they would literally print like flyers or brochures and walk to every single desk in the corporate headquarters and drop them off. So as you can imagine, uh, many of those pieces of paper wound up in the recycling bin <laughs> or the garbage, heaven forfend. Uh, so we've, we've done all of those things traditionally, but there is a better way. There is a better way. And so we're going to talk about that. One of the things that we've learned from the studies that have been done on visual communications is that we as human beings process visual messages 60,000 times faster than what we read. 60,000 times. Not 60 times, not 1,000 times, 60,000 times. It's really important to remember that. So what it means is when we have a platform like we have here at Four Winds where we can communicate to our employees visually, that's having a much more powerful impact than a poster or a desk drop or a memo or an email, which we can easily delete and ignore, right? So we know that that's a much more higher, you know, higher impact tool. And so what our system allows us to do is really display the right information on the right screen at the right time. And as a result, I, as the HR leader, can curate the content that our people are seeing in a good and powerful way. And we're going to show you some real examples of that. There were literally hundreds that I could share. So I tried to pick four or five that I felt were most salient for this audience. So let's leap in and take a look at that. So when we talk about electricity with engagement, recognition is one of the elements that helps create that electric current. Uh, so super powerful to recognize our employees. And part of, again, that study indicated just that. at 72% ranking recognition very highly as a driver of success in an organization. So how do we do that here? So we use our visual communications network to communicate and recognize each other. And you're looking at a wonderful example of it right now. So this application pulls from a native data source, and that native data source is salesforce.com. And salesforce.com is a system that we use very heavily here. Most of our 300 plus employees are in there every day, and it has a module called work.com. And the module has this recognition badging functionality in it, and it came with a certain number of canned badges, and then we created some of our own, an example of which I'll show you in a little while. And so what's wonderful about this, and I promise you, Salesforce did not ask me to say this, <laughs> what's powerful about this tool is that our technology, our software, goes into Salesforce and through an algorithm and some great coding, pulls forward a badge into a visual display every single time an employee gets badged, which is, by the way, a verb that we've created here. <laughs> so any employee can go in at any time and badge another employee and thank them for something or acknowledge an achievement, whatever that might be. Hey, you closed a deal, or great job getting that lead through, or thank you for helping me with that project, whatever it might be. So all day long, we have employees going into our system badging each other, and every time that happens, automatically it shows up on a screen. Elizabeth doesn't have to do anything. The HR leader does not need to get involved. It's all automated. 
takes about 15 minutes of setup, and it's a glorious thing. So all day long that's happening, and now the badge, that recognition badge, literally has a megaphone. But there's more going on here, and I actually want to take a moment to deconstruct the visual image to show you exactly what's happening here from an engagement and a culture perspective. So from an engagement perspective, you see, first of all, an employee says, wow, I see Baxter did something great. That's cool, good for him, right? Then they move on to thinking, so nice to see employees thinking each other. Like, that's a really cool thing. I've worked places where no one ever bothers to thank somebody else. So that's something nice about this culture, about this environment. And then it translates into the employee thinking, gee, I want to get thanked too. What do I have to do to make that happen? I want a badge as well. I want my name in lights too. So now we've moved from an engagement perspective from a passive recipient of a communications piece to being actively engaged in a thought process where their action will result. Right? So that's powerful from an engagement perspective. Now let's look at it from a cultural perspective. So first of all, from a cultural perspective, we're planting a seed that it's cool to work someplace where people think each other. That's a cool thing. And because we see these badges literally flying on our 46 screens all day long, we start to understand from a culture perspective that there are a lot of rock stars that work here. There are a lot of people who go above and beyond and do great work. And then we're also planting a seed of culture that it's a supportive environment in which we celebrate successes. They don't have to be huge successes. They can be small successes. But if they're huge, that's great too. But they all kind of have equal airtime in our visual communication platform. So lots of stuff going on in this, in this particular image. So let me take you to another you know, equally important category, social responsibility. Every HR leader I know about, every pe people leader I know, this is a topic that's of great importance. It's become really very relevant, especially in, in the recruiting process. A lot of people ask us, what are you doing? So we're gonna take a closer look at this image. It's relatively few words on here, but this image is packing a very powerful punch. So let's deconstruct it as well. And spend some time looking at what's going on here. So from an engagement perspective with the social responsibility image, first of all, I know what's happening. How many places have I worked and have we all worked where stuff was going on all the time that no one seemed to know about and so therefore participation levels were low? So this particular image has sort of paid for its own keep, if you will, just getting that message across <laughs> hundreds of times a day that this is happening. And in fact, this was a wildly successful event, but that's a sideline. Um, then the employee moves into, from an engagement perspective, wow, I have stuff I'd like to get rid of, like my 1997 HP huge computer that's down in my basement collecting dust. That would be kind of a cool thing for me to bring in and get rid of, so I'm in, sign me up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to participate in that. And then the employee moves on to say to themselves, you know, oh, there's a swap as well, so maybe I can drop off my clunky old computer and pick up something I really need. So again, we're moving from this passive recipient of information to an employee becoming actively engaged in a thought process where they will then take action and participate. So powerful from an engagement perspective. Let's talk about the, the culture perspective. So first thought that people shared with me when they saw this image was, wow, what a cool idea. Frankly, it is a cool idea. <laughs> I think it was a very cool idea. Our engagement committee came up with this idea along with a couple of other key people. So another thing that's going on here, again, with relatively few words, is that the message loud and clear, my company cares about the environment. My company is demonstrated, demonstrating social responsibility. And then the employee moves on to kind of have this seed planted of my company cares about me, and they're making it easy for me to do something good. Right. So again, very simple image, very simple application, and our creative designers came up with it, and it just looks terrific and it's packing a lot of power. I think you're starting to get the idea now. So let's move into another category that most of us spend a lot of our time thinking about, which is wellness. Uh, we have a very robust wellness program here. I could conduct a webinar just on that topic, but we won't have time today. So let's talk about this communication piece and de deconstruct it a little bit. So as we look at this image from an engagement perspective, Again, the employee becomes aware that something happening, right? Wow, did not know that we had this meditation on site. That's good information for an employee to have. So now they know, and then they kind of remember somewhere, sometimes, someone mentioning that it's actually good for them to meditate and can make them more focused. 
And then they kind of make this connection of, ah, it's right here in our conference room, and that's like two seconds for me to walk to that. So they start making those connections, which leads to then active participation. And in fact, we have very high participation in all of our wellness programs, including meditation. From a culture perspective, again, we are the HR practitioners, we're the gardeners, we're planting seeds. So here, a seed that we're planting is the company not only thinks about, but is directly, directly contributing to my wellness. The company is also letting me take time out of my day to go do this kind of thing, which was very surprising to me when I started here. I know that's very surprising to a lot of new employees when they come on board in a good way. It's a good surprise. Um, that it's not only condoned to take time out to take care of yourself and your physical well-being, but that it's encouraged. And my boss goes and does it too, not just me. And then also another seed we're planting is I work someplace that cares about its people and its well-being. Right? So even if I don't actually meditate and even if I don't go to CrossFit or yoga or any of the other activities, I like that my company cares about that and that other people get to take advantage of that. And that makes me feel good from a cultural perspective. So you see just in three, we've planted a lot of seeds. So let's look at another thing. We're going to speed up a little bit here because you're getting the point. This application is called our events application, and we use it to announce all variety of events. This example here is training, a training that I actually conducted, teamwork and collaboration. And so I'm going to confess something to all of you very publicly here. Oops, let's go back for a second. Um, Elizabeth is not a creative designer. I have many strengths. Designing is not one of them. What I love about this application is all I have to do is literally plunk information into a text box and look at it. It's like it shows up looking so slick and schmancy, like I know what I'm doing. It's great. It makes me look really good. <laughs> so two seconds of my time to type three words in a couple of conference rooms and a date or what have you, and it's just got a really nice, very formal, slick look to it. So this application just makes it easy for me to look good, quite frankly. So shifting gears a little bit, um, I would be remiss if I sat here and told all of you that we HR leaders get to do fun stuff all the time. I mean, meditation's fun. Electronics recycling is fun. However, we all know that we are also the emergency response team for the organization. And this is super important. So we have an application called our emergency messaging or alerts application. It can be used for a variety of purposes. In this case, the example you're looking at is about a thunderstorm warning. I so wish I had had this tool available to me earlier in my career, because I cannot tell you, having come from a call center you know, background, the very real emergencies that I had to deal with, like evacuating 2,000 employees because of an earthquake in Mexico City, all of whom were on the phone. There was just no way to really do that effectively. And when we can't communicate effectively with our employees, what happens? Right? They get kind of panicked. They get very nervous. Earthquakes are real stuff. Right? Tornadoes are real things. So truly, like flooding in Tampa, um, you know, hurricanes in, in some of our southern locations, uh, you know, Bangalore getting shut down dur during monsoon season, like these are real things that have happened. But now let's just put ourselves for a moment in the seat of the HR leader for a hospital. Now a tornado warning takes on an entirely new magnitude of urgency and importance. When you've got preemies in the maternity ward, you've got active surgeries going on in the OR, and you've got people on life support in the ICU, and you have thousands of employees that you need to communicate with, whether it's a tornado warning, a thunderstorm warning, anything that might put your electricity at jeopardy, worse yet, still may be a contagious disease that's in a specific wing or ward of the hospital, and you need to get that word out to all of your employees who may maybe on break or coming in or changing shift, whatever's going on. So this is a very effective communications tool. It can be color-coded for different levels of severity, yellow, orange, red. Uh, also, if I were working in a hospital, maybe I want my employees to know, but I sure don't want to alarm all of my patients and their family members who are in the hospital. So maybe some color coding can help get key messaging out without having to be overt with our public-facing communications tools. So. It's really, really powerful. Again, I so wish I'd had this tool much earlier in my career. So what's it all add up to, right? We've shared a few examples with you of how we cultivate our culture, encourage engagement in the workplace, communicate effectively in the workplace. We promised you some numbers. We're going to get into that now. I was an English major, so I'm just going to tell you right now, there were some really smart people that helped me with the math. <laughs> so when I started here roughly a year ago, um, 
obviously we worked on a number of programs, right, to engage the hearts and minds of our employees. And I can tell you that all of those programs are working fueled by our platform that we're talking about today. And one of the key metrics that changed fairly dramatically was turnover. So we are trending year over year in turnover to see a 10% increase or 10% 10, 10 decrease uh, in turnover, which is really astounding and very hard to achieve in a lot of environments. So let's dig into the numbers a little bit about exactly what that means. So if we talk about having roughly 320 employees in the workplace times a 10% improvement, we're talking about 32 employees that we didn't lose that had the old trend continued, we would have. So what does that add, add up to in terms of dollars? Well, we take that 32 employees and, and multiply it by our average salary here in the workplace. And we've used a formula for the sake of being somewhat conservative of 100% turnover costs. There are a variety of formulas that the various companies use that vary from you know, 20% cost of turnover to 220% cost of turnover varying on the levels of the position. But in our case, we wanted to be somewhat conservative. So let's just say it's gonna cost me exactly what I'm paying you to replace you at 100%. So with that simple math, $2.24 million. That's a pretty impressive number, right? I've, I've impressed even myself looking at that number. So now, can I say that our, our approach to cultivating culture, our approach to communicating visually is 100% allocated to that $2.24 million? No, I can't say that. And if I did, frankly, most of you would call me on it. You'd be like, hey, Elizabeth, that's not accurate. So again, let's be a little bit conservative and say that 10% of that number we can attribute to the way that we communicate, the way that we use the power of visual communications to fuel our workplace, right? So now I wanna walk you through how much does, you know, so that saves us, if we, if we figure that on a monthly basis, that saves us about $19,000 a month. So now let's look at how much it costs us to have in place and use our platform. As I mentioned before, we have about 46 screens, give or take, in our headquarters here. And they cost us between hardware and licensing, you know, running the software, about $200 a month each. So in aggregate, it's about $9,200 a month that they cost us for the company in total. So now we know that that tool is being used by a lot of other departments. It's not being used just by our talent practice. So we're using a certain percentage of it, but other people get, so to speak, airtime. So let's take that $9,200 a month and say 40% of it really we can attribute to our talent practice, our HR airtime, if you will. And that comes to $3,600 roughly, $3,680 to be exact, as you can see here. So the math is pretty simple when you look at it here. Our monthly savings on the turnover is $19,000. The monthly cost of this platform and tool for me as the HR leader is about $3,600. That's a return on investment of 516%. I mean, it's just astounding. And we're being conservative. Remember, we've used kind of a straight 100% formula. We're using only 10% of that $2.24 million number to calculate it. If we went up a little bit and say 20% is fueled by our platform, you'd be talking about an ROI of over 1,000, right? So you get an astoundingly high ROI for relatively small investment. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about engagement. So we talked about turnover going down by 10 points. Engagement's the one you want to go up. <laughs> so let's reorient all of you to something you probably already know. Gallup has published in its most recent survey that the national average of engagement is a fairly abysmal 31.5%. I sort of get depressed even thinking about that. It just means the average American is really not all that happy in the workplace, quite frankly, right? So I feel privileged to work someplace where that's not the case. So let's take a look at four wins. So our employee engagement when Elizabeth walked through the door was actually respectably pretty high at 64%. That's double the national average. So we were doing pretty well without a talent strategy in our platform, right? Without a conscious, deliberate approach to cultivating our culture, we were doing pretty well, right? We had a culture and we were doing a lot of really good things, kind of, I say kind of by accident sometimes. Uh, so respectable at 64%. We just ran our, our survey not too long ago and you can see in our nice little pretty green star, 74% engagement. I have to tell you, that's really astounding. And for anyone who lives and breathes the HR world, they know how high that score is and how difficult it is to achieve even the highest engaged employers out there, maybe in the low 80s, 
So very few of them ever hit the 90% mark. That's virtually impossible, though nothing's impossible, again, because it's hard to do. It takes a lot of effort. So we're at 74%. So turnover down 10%, engagement up 10%. Let's talk a little bit about the net promoter score. This is something that we actually historically had not measured, that we started measuring when I got here. We just pulled the latest stats from SAT metrics just not too long ago, and the national average of NPS scores across industries came out to 40%. Our NPS score here, 77. 77% of our employers would absolutely recommend four wins. Uh, it's just an astounding score. So when you combine those two, I think what it all adds up to, as we mentioned before, um, is that the bottom line result is it works. You know, it works. What we do works in the workplace. And yes, there's real work behind all of those programs. And yes, we actually really do have to hold the yoga and the CrossFit and the meditation. And we actually do have to hold the electronics recycling. But I have to tell you, your employees don't give you credit for what they don't know about. They have to know about it to give you credit for it as an employer. And I believe very passionately that those high scores are a direct reflection of the fact that not only do we do cool stuff, but we tell people about it. And we saturate our organization with this ethos. We saturate our employees with the culture that we consciously and deliberately want to cultivate. So we're nearing our 35 minutes, and I want to end with a fun little story about the humble burrito. So let me tell you about this image. I mentioned before that Salesforce.com came with a certain number of badges, and then we created some. So let me tell you why this matters. We have a gentleman who shows up every Friday morning to sell us breakfast burritos. And we call him Burrito Guy. In fact, I don't think anyone even knows his real name. He's just the Burrito Guy. We love the Burrito Guy. We love his breakfast burritos. And most of our 320 plus employees run downstairs on Friday mornings and stand in line, even when it's cold, to buy his breakfast burritos. So it's really a part of our culture. Like we, it's, it's part of our Friday celebration is that we get breakfast burritos. So one of our very clever and ambitious employees came forward, a gentleman named Dale, who's really bright and enthusiastic, and said, we should have a burrito badge. Like, we should burrito each other and send a badge saying, hey, thank you, Janet, for helping me with that. Thank you, Emily, for helping me with that. And then along with the burrito badge comes a promise to purchase a burrito for that person on Friday. So it's kind of a virtual burrito IOU, which I know sounds weird, but it really works. <laughs> so we deployed this a couple of weeks ago, highly successful. I myself gave out six of them the very first day because clearly I owed a lot of people favors. Um, <laughs> so, but what I love about this story is that I think it weaves together the threads of everything that we've talked about, right? You know, again, employees, actively involved in innovating new initiatives and new ideas, bringing that forward in a way that reflects our culture, that we are tying, that, that we're building and cultivating our culture through that, using those ideas, using our platform to message that idea, and it becomes just exponentially more effective than me just buying you a burrito and plunking it on your desk, right? And everyone gets to see who's getting burritoed when. So since we deployed the burrito badge, I have to tell you, a couple of other suggestions came forward. So the latte badge, the martini badge, and the buy me a pint badge. <laughs> so uh, so I, I agreed to, to look into those as long as martinis and pints were after hours. So, uh, so in conclusion, as I said before, it works. I think this is a fun little story. We're going to uh, wrap up, so we have time to take your questions. And with that, I'm going to hand the mic over to Ms. Janet again. Thank you all so much for your time. Hold on one sec. Thank you, Elizabeth. That was very fun. Yes, the burrito, very, very popular. <laughs> well, we've had a couple questions come in, and so I'm going to toss you a few and see if you'd like to address them. The first one uh, that we got in was saying the following. An employee engagement score of 74% is really impressive. So do employees actually mention the screens and the programs you're promoting in their surveys? Now, that's a great question, Janet. And actually, they do. Um, so I personally have read all of the engagement survey data, all of the verbatims. And yes, they, they mentioned this very frequently on one of the reasons that they would recommend us, that NPS question that we asked. They'd recommend us because they feel like we eat our own dog food, so to speak. We're using our own product, and they feel like they really know what's going on a lot of the time. Um, we've also conducted quite a few focus groups um, to inform the content of it. You know, what would you like to see more of or less of? And we've uh, we've just had dozens of employees volunteer to be in those focus groups. And so, yeah, it's really a central topic and a key distinguishing feature about Four Winds. 
And another one here said, uh, you showed a lot of different types of content that you're displaying around your office. Do you find this multi-message approach uh, is best, or is it better to focus on one or two main messages to be more effective? Uh, that's a great, great question. So I'm going to answer that question in two parts. Um, we have done those focus groups that I told you about before, and the focus groups indicate that um, employees like to see a variety of content. So they really do enjoy that. And so the correlation I'll make there is to like the radio station. Everything needs to get a certain amount of airtime, and if you see too much of one thing, it just it loses its impact, right? So yes, variety of content is important. However, we have gotten a couple of specific requests to slow down the speed with which the recognition um, images come up because people actually want to read what those messages say. They want to hear what employee you know, A said to employee B um, and take the time to read it. So, so we've had to slow down some of our content, but other stuff they want us to channel through more frequently. So yes, variety is important. And we just got another one in because they're noticing the apps coming up from the app store. And uh, I think the question is really related to can you explain what those are? Ah, awesome. Well, it would take time to go into each one of them, but we have a four win store in which those applications that I shared with you and now these new examples that you're seeing are showing up. And those are all applications that we use here to communicate with our employees. They're everything from congratulating people on a wedding or a birth to, you know, announcements of various sorts and uh, company history slides, which I love. Guess who, which I call the virtual icebreaker. So when you see something funny about someone on the guess who, they, it asks a question like it tells something funny about the person and unveils who they are. I call that the virtual icebreaker. So you walk into a meeting and you say, hey, Janet, I didn't know that you broke your leg three times skiing on double black diamonds, right? And it just kind of winds up being a conversation starter. So, um, but some of these are more dashboard, like weather, statistics, traffic, Rockies games, right. that kind of stuff. Yep, yep. And as you said, I think it really contributes when you're not feeling particularly creative yourself in designing things, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I should, I never feel creative about designing anything. Okay. <laughs> Um, I have one more quick question here as we're coming through. In your ROI calculation, you mentioned that the average cost to replace an employee is 100% of their salary. Can you expand on that? Yeah, I, you know, I can. As I mentioned before, there are various, if, if any of us went out and kind of Googled what are the methodologies for calculating the cost of turnover, you'll see a variety of different ones. Um, I think the most scientific would be to say that it costs more to replace somebody who's, who's more expensive and more valuable and took longer to recruit. So again, it varies from 20% to 220%. Conventional wisdom in the HR world, most of us were taught 150%. Like that is a very common formula. But in this case, we just wanted to be super conservative and we just did straight math. Great. I think we have time for one more question, and it's come through. It says, did you identify measurement opportunities before or after the screens were installed? That's interesting. Um, I think when I first started here that I had sort of a vague thought that I should track certain things, um, but, but I didn't do it formally. So, so what I would say is that we have questions that speak to this in our engagement survey. I wasn't deliberately tracking it, but I was really glad to see the impact that it had. All right, again, I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. We have been recording this, so you are very welcome to uh, make the request if you'd like to get a copy. Again, it's webinar at fourwindsinteractive.com. And if any of you did, in fact, submit some questions that we didn't get a chance to get to, we will reach back out to you and, and make sure that Elizabeth can answer those questions for you. So, so thanks very much. We'll be doing uh, another one of these series coming up in another month or so, and we'll be focusing then on operations and how operations can utilize this and what kind of ROI is involved. So again, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining.